So moving on, we are inside of Proverbs. We're in uh, verse one and verse uh, uh, two. And we're moving on from knowing wisdom. We're trying to get out of that topic, but um, uh, needless to say, we're still learning a lot. And we're trying to go into the instruction category to know instruction and to perceive the words of understanding. See, knowing wisdom is having experimental knowledge. Uh, knowing wisdom is experiencing in your life <clears throat> the things that are freely given to us by God. So, we know this. In uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16, Know ye not. Now, this is in uh, uh, King's English. I read this because my concordance is attached to it. And uh, I like uh, having it at hand. So, in the King James, Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells inside of you. And so asking this question is really asking, are you not aware? Do you not understand? Are you not intimately acquainted with the fact that you are the temple of God? And that is a powerful, powerful question. I'm going to go ahead and take a drink of water so I don't drive you guys crazy for the rest of the podcast. So hold on just one second. So, are you not aware that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Are you not aware of this fact? Have you not really experienced the reality of this? Now, when we dive deep into these words, you know, inside of the Greek language, um, the first word that comes up is uh, uh, in the your body is a temple is that it is a shrine. And this, of course, uh, implies something that is very sacred, a sacred place a sacred space and it means to be a receptacle and it re it means to be a container now it's not um, that the container is so great it's the contents of the container that really makes it great right and this is what uh, was meant by that we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us and so that he has deposited, deposited uh, a treasure. Think about this for a moment inside of a, a safety box uh, at the bank where you uh, deposit uh, very valuable items for safekeeping um, because you want to uh, keep them safe. Now, the, the box uh, is not that glorious, right? It's just a box. It's just a container. Um, but the contents that are inside that box could be worth millions and millions of dollars. And so we see the reality here is that it's not that this container is so great, but it's what this container is inhabited with that makes it glorious. And the reality is, is that what makes my, my uh, life shine and what makes my mindset thrive and my life work is what is what the power that I am uh, utilizing and that is with inside of us. And so that's an amazing reality. So something sacred, something uh, awesome has been de deposited inside of here. So now because of that, we have become a sacred space. And that is, you know, in the... Um, in religion and religiosity, we understand throughout church history that as the um, saints begin to die, uh, they begin to bury them, and then soon they begin to uh, have them, you know, in the basement of the church and all these different things, is because they begin to have this reverence uh, for for the saints and begin to create sacred spaces and all these different things. And so that's what began to happen in the natural, but we we put it on an external uh, reality, and we didn't understand that it's supposed to be an internal reality, and that is that we have been inhabited by the Spirit of God, and we have now become a sacred space. 
and what the the illusion is is that we have uh, created these buildings that are supposed to be the house of God and the temple and relics and sacred things and and all of this different stuff not understanding that God doesn't dwell in the temple made by the hands of men and that is that he has decided um, that we are the receptacle that we are the container and then so we go cross land and sea to see all these different sacred spaces and sacred lands and holy lands but we fail to understand the central truth that my body is the temple and that this is supposed to be the sacred space now what would happen if i begin to believe that in reality and in full assurance that this is true um, I would let I wouldn't let certain things inside the temple, right? Uh, I wouldn't allow my temple to be desecrated. And so, when we think about addiction, it, it is the ultimate desecration of the temple, and that is that we bring things inside God's container that uh, don't belong inside the house of God. And I'm talking about this house, okay? And so we thoroughly understand that this is where he decided to dwell. So addiction is bringing things inside of the temple that begin to um, destroy the holiness or the sacredness of the temple. And so we do this with addiction and we do this by choice. And so once we begin to understand that we are a container much like this water bottle here, if you're watching by video, I got this Aquafina, this water bottle here. This plastic here is just a container. And that is, it, it, uh, it, it contains this water. And so this is a, a analogy of what we truly are, that we are a container. And without the glory or without God, you know, inhabiting us and filling us, uh, we're just empty, right? And this is what uh, um, what we feel inside of addiction. We feel the emptiness. Uh, we feel alone. We feel scared. We feel the fear. And that fear drives us to fill ourselves. Okay? And what we do is we begin to fill ourselves with substance. That's what this is. Water inside a container. Substance. And so we try to fill ourselves with the emptiness, the void. We recognize that we're empty and we try to fill ourselves with things that uh, that are, are supposed to satisfy us, right? But that's the delusion. It never satisfies. And we'll never, uh, we'll never feel the longing that we have for satisfaction, no matter how hard we try, right? Because after the drugs wear off, we're back to reality. After the alcohol wears off is the headache, the stomach, stomach ache, the shakes, the uneasiness, right? Uh, many of you who have experienced that know exactly what I'm talking about. So after the pleasure <clears throat> comes the pain. And that's the whole delusion of this thing is that it's somehow pleasurable. But as I talked about before, sin is only pleasurable for a season and we know a season only lasts three months. And so we try to fill ourselves and not understanding that we are called to be a sacred space and we have tried to fill ourselves with other things that don't satisfy. And they don't bring the ultimate pleasure that we're looking for. And there's no contentment. All there is is frustration. All there is is the feeding of the lust and the longing for more. And you'll find that everything that we try to fill ourselves with creates this effect. After it is uh, finished, after it is over, the longing returns and we just want more. More, more, and more. Again, again, again. Now Jesus said that he would uh, be the living waters, that a man would partake of it and he would not die, and that would quench his thirst, and that he would no longer be thirsty. And what that means is a satisfaction of the soul. And that doesn't mean that I'm an endless pit anymore. <laughs> that is filled with, uh, that is unsatisfied and never happy. That Jesus Christ comes in 
and begins to inhabit us by the Spirit of God. And that the satisfaction begins to happen inside of our life. And this is an awesome, awesome reality, and it is really the central message uh, of the effect of the gospel inside of our lives. So we are the sacred space. What would happen if we said, you know what, my body is sacred, my mind is sacred. And that is that I'm not going to partake and I'm not going to consume of things that are going to defile my temple. Right? So everything that we allow to come in begins to affect our heart. It begins to affect our mindset. And that there is really no external thing that can make you dirty, as Jesus talked about. But out of the heart, we allow these things to come in inside of our heart, inside of our minds, and we begin to set out and to pursue these things and we become defiled. And our lust consumes us and we seek and we desire to uh, possess and obtain things. And the hunger never ceases and it's never satisfied. So, we have to decide on whether we are going to take this reality of sacred space um, to the reality of God, what God does. And that is this body, this mindset, this belief system is a sacred space. And I am a container for the glory and for the power of God uh, inside of an earthen vessel. That's a powerful reality. Think about this for a moment. Now, the Bible says that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead dwells inside of you. Uh, this is truly wisdom. Uh, if you think about it to its core, understanding that what God has freely given to us and understanding the reality that we are the temple and that the same power that resurrected Christ from the dead lives inside of us. And it's going to resurrect our mind from dysfunction. It's going to resurrect positive habits that begin to destroy the old routines. It's going to resurrect the abundant life as we yield and as we allow the power to begin to operate inside of our life. That same power. I don't know about you, but I'm not really sure about what kind of power it takes to resurrect something from the dead. Right. If there was like a voltage meter on the power that it took to resurrect something from the dead, I would imagine the voltage meter would be all the way to full, right? full capacity. And so the reality is, is that that same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells inside of each one of us as believers. Now, whether we believe and appropriate that or not is another thing, but the reality is still true that we have this treasure in earthen vessels and that excellent power is from God and not from us. Powerful reality. Moving on, Ephesians 3.19 says this, knowing wisdom is knowing the love of Christ. Ephesians 3.19, and to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge now, I like that because we've been thoroughly communicating how, how knowledge uh, tends to puff up uh, and it begins to feed your mind and that it leads to a lot of elated sense of uh, pride and arrogance and it feeds the ego and all of these things. But to know and experience, right? To know, to be intimately acquainted <clears throat> with the love of Christ, it passes and surpasses and is greater than uh, any form of knowledge that is out there in the world today that you might be filled. There's that analogy again. Filled. Much like a container. With all the fullness of God. And you see, the reality in this is that God is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. And even if you see an action inside of the Old Testament or you see some actions inside of the world or, or whatever, uh, we don't perceive any motive behind anything that God does. And it appears on the outside that it's out of fierce anger. 
We look at some of the Old Testament examples and we see it looks like God is just manifesting his fierce anger. But we don't understand the motivation and the intention behind what God is doing. And the only way for this righteous anger to manifest is inside of a holy love that is beginning to take place inside of it, his heart. And so you see him consume the enemies of good. And you watched him commit acts against people. And it, be, it was be, because they were unredeemable. And that is that there was no good in them and they would create no good at all whatsoever. Totally unredeemable. And that is that they would constantly hate, kill, and persecute good. And so you see that he is manifested in that love and he deals with the problem. But yet, anger is manifested. Yet God is love. Behind every action, you will find the love of God. Now, it's hard for us to really uh, to grasp that, but it is still uh, the truth and reality. So knowing, uh, knowing wisdom is really knowing and experiencing the love of God. And we're going to dive into this more in the next episode. Um, but what, I, what we're going to go into is this reality that God is apparent. Jesus said to pray like this, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Right? And so we look at that and throughout the centuries, people have uh, said that prayer much like an incantation. And they have repeatedly, just like I have, and they've said this prayer. But what we have really skipped over is the whole meaning of it. But first and foremost is this. Our Father. And what we thoroughly understand from this is that we are to, we, universal. He didn't say my Father. He said our Father. And so the first reality of God and relationship with him is the universal father, our father. And of course, he dwells in heaven. And so there it gives two powerful realities here. God is a parent. And he's going to treat us as such. His role, who he is, how we are to relate to him. He is love, and he is the parent, okay? He is the father, and we'll dive into more detail on that, but I want to ask you this. Are you cheating your body like a sacred space? Are you walking in wisdom and understanding? Know ye not. Do you not understand? Have, don't you understand and experience the reality that you are the temple of the living God and that you are the sacred space? Get in touch with that reality so you could stop defiling the temple with what you allow inside of your eyes. Stop defiling the temple by what you allow inside of your mouth. Uh, we'll see you later. Peace.